This video is going to be a little long-winded and kind of ranty in full disclosure. I am starting an organization that is going to focus on holding three printer companies that do not abide by the GPL licensing, that utilize GPL license firmware like Marlin or Repetit accountable for their action or lack of action. Right now, I've got a short list of companies that are known to be offenders in this. Some of them have released source code for a few of their models. Others have not released any. Some of them have released source code for a few, but still are lacking. Just my list right now as of writing this little list, April 1st, 2018, I have ANET, Bronxy, Reality, Wanhow, JG Aurora, Zone Star, Formbot, Athorbot, and RaiseCube. Um, these are just a few companies. I'm sure the list will grow longer as we start digging and finding out what companies actually offer the firmware for their printers. What we're doing is we set up a website, a Facebook page, and a Twitter account so we can interact on the most active social media platforms. A lot of these companies are active on Facebook, on Twitter, so we need to be able to engage with them. The website we have set up is 3dprintergplfenders.com. You can also send additional offenders to info at 3dprintergplfenders.com and if you have firmware for machines that you've received from the manufacturer you can send that there and we're going to basically compile a list and keep a repository of the source code for these machines so that customers can get access to uh, just for example like creality has released the cr10 board firmware uh, albeit an older version, uh, but they have not released the CR10S one, and I personally have requested it. A couple of resellers like Tiny Machines have requested it, and they will not provide it. What we need help with is gathering information on these companies, such as how to contact them, uh, whether they have Facebook pages, Facebook groups, email addresses for the employees at the companies that may handle the firmware side of things. Phone numbers may be helpful, but they're probably going to be Chinese numbers. So calling them is not really going to be that easy. And then addresses for them, mainly if they're in the US, it would be nice to have addresses for the Chinese ones just as reference. And then we're going to also compile names of the people that you know, head up the companies, handle the firmware. So basically try to just get all the information we can into one central location so that end users can contact these companies to request the firmware that they're entitled to. We're also going to have lists of the machines that they have and if they release source for a particular model. So we're going to need help compiling these lists of the machines. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to filter all this stuff and aggregate it into one central place on our website so that there's one location where you can go to see if your manufacturer has released the original source code for the firmware. Now, when you get source code, it needs to be the source code for the firmware that shipped with the machine or the hex file that they gave you. Them providing a hex file is not providing you the firmware source code because you cannot make changes to that build with just the hex file. So if you ask Creality, and like I have, for the source code for the CR10S, they will literally tell you to go to marlinfw.org and download that. But what they don't tell you is that it doesn't have the power resume feature. Now, this may be something that Creality developed on their own or paid an outside company to do. I believe a gentleman by the name of Zach, who actually resides in the US, coded that because a couple people that have dealt with Zach I can't remember his last name, coded the power resume function. Now, I've also requested the, the source code from Zach, but he gives me excuses on why he can't send the, the firmware, whether he's on a hotspot and has a slow internet connection or just he just eventually stopped responding. So I don't know if there's any merit to that. So if anybody has heard of some guy named Zach that has done the power resume firmware, let me know. Send it to the info at 3dprintergplfenders.com address. What we also need to do is get the resellers on board that sell these printers, mainly ones in countries like the US and the UK, that can actually legally do something about GPL non-compliance. Now, while the resellers are not at fault, I want to make that very clear. What they can do is leverage their connection to the companies because they're obviously purchasing directly from these companies to get the source code for their customers, which in then turn, we can get it to everybody. I want to also have a list of resellers and what particular machines they sell and contact information for them 
so that people can then contact their resellers to request the source code and then they can move that request up the chain and put pressure on the companies they're buying these machines from. Now, if you're a reseller of one of these machines and there has been community built firmware for them, I would highly urge you to ship the machines with that. So that way you can actually provide your customers with source code, whether that be an ANET machine, Tronxy, Creality, etc. There are community builds. Now, I do understand that sometimes they may not be as stable and there may be features missing like the Creality power resume function because like I said before, they never released the source code for that, but it would look really good to show that you're trying to make a best effort. As a customer, of these machines. Why this should be important to you is because if you want to make a repair to your machine, let's say your thermistor goes out or your heater cartridge died, with the thermistor being more important to be able to make firmware changes to, you won't be able to. So if you need to replace your thermistor and it's a different type of thermistor, you would normally need to change a value in your source code. Now, if they send you the hex file, you have no ability to make that, meaning you would have to go directly to the manufacturer which is going to charge you an arm and a leg for that specific part instead of being able to just source any thermistor off of Amazon or eBay or whatever reseller you want to use and then use it on your machine to get it back up and running. Obviously, another issue here is that if you can't buy the parts from the manufacturer or the manufacturer goes out of business, you're kind of stuck either replacing your entire control board, which is a long, lengthy process and not a lot of people know how to do, or giving up the machine. So you can see how that could be a problem. In addition to that, if you have the source code, you can make a lot of updates and feature additions to your printer. One of the main ones being thermal protection. And what thermal protection means is that if your hot end or bed starts to malfunction, whether it's a thermistor malfunctioning or a wire broke loose or a heater cartridge fell out of the hot end because it wasn't screwed in correctly, there's been failures like these noted all across the internet in the 3D printer communities, it will shut the printer down. Most of these Chinese printers do not have thermal protection enabled, which means it can cause a fire if something goes wrong thermally on the machine. So this is a huge deal, as you can tell. In addition to other things, just like making your printer more usable, like adding on live Z adjustment, or making changes to your acceleration values, or calibrating your extruder and actually having an EEPROM to save all these changes to. Seeing as these companies are mostly located in China, and the ones I mentioned here in this video are all Chinese companies, there's not much we can do legally without sinking a ton of money into it. So what we can do is we can speak with our wallets. We can try and not purchase these machines and support these companies monetarily to try and get their attention that we're serious about this. And as consumers, we want them to be held accountable to the GPL license. Me personally and professionally as someone who started a 3D printing company based around Chinese printers, and doing reviews and upgrades to them, I will no longer be doing reviews for machines that do not abide by the GPL license. I will not support companies that do not adhere to the licensing standards as I cannot in good conscience recommend a machine from a company that so blatantly violates the GPL license. As you all know, I have put out firmwares for machines that do not abide by the GPL license but that has come at a cost of many, many hours of reverse engineering, tracing out circuit boards, testing, trial and error, just to get it working. And we shouldn't have to go through all this just to make improvements, errors, or changes to our printer. In addition to that, we are going to start reaching out to publications like Make, which organizes events like Maker Fair all across the country, and even all across the world, actually, for Make, they also have a magazine publication, so we're going to reach out to that side of things to see if they can also publish information so we can start getting more traction. I'm also going to reach out to any sort of rep rap type festivals like Midwest Rep Rap Festival, or MRF for short, and East Coast Rep Rap Festival. These companies do not belong at community type events that are focused around open source and the openness of the 3D printing platform because they do not abide by it. I hope this has been something that people will actually watch and take to heart, do something about. I want you guys to share this video, tweet it at these companies on, who have accounts on Twitter, post it on their Facebook pages, post it in the groups for these machines. We need to start raising awareness now and start getting them to comply with the GPL license. If you want to help out with this project, you can also send information to info at 3dprintergplfenders.com. 
and I could really use the help because I have a feeling this is going to take up a lot of time. But this is something that's very important to me, something that I feel needs to be done and needs to be addressed sooner than later because it's only going to get worse as time goes on if no one does anything about it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you share this video everywhere. I don't even care if you subscribe, but just share the video so people can start doing things about these companies that are blatantly offending the GPL license and restricting options for repairs, upgrades, and customizations to the printers that they've purchased.